Welcome everyone to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff and everyone that is helping to lead worship today, I welcome you. We're so excited that you have chosen to join with Douglas Avenue today for online worship. It is our honor to be able to lead you. It is, of course, a special Sunday. We are celebrating Human Relations Day today, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend as well, so we are particularly glad that you are here for these special moments. I want to extend a special welcome to people who may be worshiping with us for the first time online today. Thank you so much. We hope that you will make sure to fill out the contact form that is pinned right in the comments section. And we hope everyone will fill out the contact form that's participating today in online worship. There's a place there, of course, for your contact information so that we can connect with you, that we can um, help and encourage you in online worship and in small groups and in prayer and in service. There's also a place there for you to put your prayer requests that go to our pastors, to our prayer team. So please use that contact form today. When we come together for worship, we always make a promise together that we will participate and that we will be a blessing. When we promise to participate, that means we're going to go ahead and participate today. So we encourage you to close down other devices and distractions, maybe light a candle to help you focus, and then participate. Do what it is we're doing. If we're praying, pray. If we're standing up and singing, go ahead and stand up and sing. Just be fully engaged in what it is that we're doing. You can put comments in the comment section, all of those things. And then we promise that we're going to be a blessing. So that means that the way that we're in the comment section today, that that's a blessing. The way we're with the people in our household, whoever we're worshiping with, that we are a blessing to one another and that we're a blessing to the entire community with this time of worship together. Also, when we come together, we do love to share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. You can say, peace be with you and respond, and also with you. I encourage you to do that with whomever you might be gathered with, to share that with one another in the comment section, to share that with me right now. And we're going to be led in that uh, by several folks in our congregation, our DAUMC family. So peace be with you. Hi, my name is Barbara Webster. I've been a member of the church for 12 years. I am also in the chancel choir and the handbook choir. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Diane Steinbaker. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I also am a member of Merriam Circle and of the prayer team. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Jill Friday. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Karen Brown. I'm a member of Trustees and Lydia Circle and of Praise Band. Please join me in singing, I am thine, O Lord.
Good morning. I'm Liz Schwartzkopf. I currently serve DAUMC on the Nurture Committee. Please join me in our opening prayer based on Psalm 139. Creating God, how deeply you know us. In the mystery of your love, you see who we are and who we might become. Our bodies are your creation. They are wonderfully made. Our minds reflect your handiwork. Our spirits are a gift from you. You welcome us with all that we are and all that we are not. You call us by name and invite us to follow. Lead us now into the depths of your love so that we might share that love with your world. Amen. During the month of January in online worship, we're sharing together in a special video witness series with folks in our congregation, sharing their deepest hopes for 2021. So I encourage you to open your heart, open your ears to receive this witness for 2021. Hi, everybody. I am Lori Klimmer, and I am the Director of Youth and Children's Ministry here at Douglas. And this is Laud. Laud and I's hope for our community this year is for our children and our youth, that they remain resilient, that things can start to get back to normal for them, and that they know how very much they are loved. Hello, hello, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who may be participating in worship to get in close to your screen, to your device, so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. Everybody loves small talk, I know. So get in close right now for small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud and Laud's wonderful assistant. Today we're gonna to be talking about a word that we're also talking about in Celebrate Wonder and that is include. You could say inclusion, include, just a really important word for us. What does it mean to include, Laud? What do you think? Do you have any idea? Well, what's it mean? Well, I don't, really, maybe you could show me. Hmm. Oh, a, a bear. Okay. A, oh, a turtle. So we have, we have a bear, we have a lamb, we have a turtle. Yes, they're all included. Of course. Hmm. Now this is a skunk. Hmm. I, I know, I know. You're, it's, uh, you might be pushing it a little, but yes. The skunk, we include him too. Oh, scaredy squirrel, of course we, of course we include him. I'm gonna put him back here because I think he's kind of scared of, well, everybody's scared of the skunk and the bear and the, and oh, and a hammy or hamster. Well, yes. The point is, all of these things are different. They're different colors. He's even in the water. He doesn't exactly live on the land. He lives in the water. He's scared. He has a lot of anxiety. He's seen better days and is stinky. A lot of people are just scared of him. But they're all included. And in God's kingdom, we're all included. And we need to remember that. Right, Laud? Yeah. All of your friends. You That was very nice of you to include all of your friends today. So keep that in mind, guys. No matter what, everybody's included. Have a great Sunday. We love you. Bye. Hello, I'm Sydney Young. I'm a member of the Zephyr Sunday School class. Our first reading from the Bible is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible readings. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. 
You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Hello, I'm Max Brinkley from Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Our second reading from the Bible is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decides to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, are you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You'll see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you'll see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Good morning. Please join members of the praise band as we sing, I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. 
My family and I have lived in many different places across this country, so I've served in a lot of different kinds of churches and ministries across this country as well. Before living here in beautiful Springfield, Illinois, my family and I lived from 2011 to 2018 in Lacey, Washington, next to Olympia, the capital of Washington State. The Olympia, Washington area was so different than anywhere else I had ever lived. The beautiful geography of mountains and ocean and forest, the West Coast vibe, the Native American peoples of the Salish Sea, and a large active military community uh, that was there with Joint Base Lewis McCord. This was a wildly diverse community. If you are under the impression that people who serve in the military and their families are monolithic in thought, circumstance, or belief, just strike that notion from your head right now. The whole place, from geography to people, was extremely diverse. My ministry at that time was starting a new United Methodist Faith community in the midst of that fast-moving and diverse community. This was beautiful, rewarding, and emotionally difficult work. I do particularly love meeting new people, making new friends, and walking with people in their faith journey for however long that might be, which in this ministry setting was usually in the six to 18 month range. I can see in my mind's eye those uh, knowing nods from those of you who have been a part of military life. Now, this brings me to Bunko Nights, which is a phenomenon I knew nothing about before living in Olympia, Washington. For those of you unfamiliar with Bunko, it is a dice game in which you need at least three groups of four people to play. So at least 12 people to have a decent Bunko game. You need money to put into the pot that is distributed to winners and losers at the end of the night, also known as gambling. And by my experiences of it, there is often a lot of drinking and cussing and storytelling and laughter and all those kinds of things like that that go on. It's pretty awesome. And uh, with the drinking, gambling, and cussing, perhaps a questionable place for a United Methodist pastor to show up. Now, I got invited to my first bunko night by a 20-something young mom who I'd met through Girl Scouts to go to another person's house whom I'd never met to go play bunko. Now, by the time um, I got to, to this invitation and playing bunko, I was pretty good at introducing myself to new people by not leading with, Hi, I'm Reverend Meredith Brown, United Methodist Pastor. Because that's a surefire way to bring a room to silence and to stop people from honest conversation. Just trust me on this one. But as we got into throwing dice and talking and laughing and sharing, word got round that I was a pastor, and then the jokes got really good, as did some of the questions in the conversation. During this season of ministry, I was blessed with invitations to bunko and other questionable activities by folks who were not like me as well as doing a whole lot of my own inviting uh, to faith community and its associated questionable activities of folks who were not like me. I continue to be amazed by the bravery, honesty, and willingness to be open to relationships that this process engendered. How brave is the 20-something young mom to invite a 40-something Methodist pastor to a dice-playing drinking night? Or how brave the 40-something Methodist pastor to invite the cynical, tattooed 20-year-old for prayer and service at the food bank. But I think it's this bravery and honesty and real relationships that is key if we're ever going to see our faith be really engaging and transforming for people who do not yet go to church or who don't have a relationship with God or who honestly ask, can anything good come from this Christian faith? We see in our Bible story that Max shared with us a whole mix of that bravery, honesty, and relationship play out in the conversations of Philip, Nathaniel, and Jesus. Just previous, Jesus had picked up Andrew as a follower. Jesus invited Andrew and another to 
come and see. Come and see what Jesus is doing. Come and see what Jesus is teaching. Come and see how Jesus is building relationship with people. Andrew immediately finds his brother Simon, who becomes Simon Peter, and brings him to Jesus to come and see as well. We enter the story in our reading today in verse 43 with Jesus heading on to Galilee, encountering Philip and inviting him to follow. Turns out Philip was from the same small city as Andrew and Simon Peter. Then the chain of invitation continues with Philip, who finds Nathanael. Philip enthusiastically tells Nathanael, we found him, the one whom Moses and the prophets wrote. It's Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. And Nathanael responds, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'll stop. Kind of slowed their role there with the invitation. Can't you hear the exasperation, maybe even the cynicism, maybe even the pain or hopelessness in Nathaniel's response? But I don't think we can just dismiss Nathaniel's reaction. His question is an honest one. It's not necessarily just a knee-jerk, cynical reaction, but honest and grounded in experience. Indo-Latinx educator, consultant, and artist Ana Yaisi Velasco Sanchez writes so powerfully that we can't examine Nathaniel's actions or tone outside of his circumstances. Waiting has taught him and his people a lesson with which so many oppressed people groups are intimately familiar. Nathaniel is an Israelite, a people who have been waiting for 600 years for the fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah, Hosea, and Malachi, the coming of the Messiah, release from the oppressive rule of foreign colonizers, and a restored relationship with their creator. However, at the moment we meet Nathaniel in this passage, his people are being subjugated by the Romans with no end in their oppression in sight. He has learned the lesson indigenous people, enslaved descendants, and so many others have learned time and time again that hope is vital, but it is also exhausting. Velasco Sanchez goes on. While there is nobility ascribed to continued hope in the face of impossible circumstances, this discounts the reality that with every false promise or reneged contract, a little bit of belief dies. And after centuries of false messiahs and failed revolutions against colonial powers, that any Israelite would accept the arrival of the Messiah without question is a lot to demand of a beaten down, poor, and oppressed race. Such outrageous hope in the face of objective reality is more akin to denial than faith. And still, Nathaniel found it within himself to follow Philip and go and meet another potential savior. How many people do we know or who are out there carry those same kinds of questions as Nathaniel? Black people, women of color, LGBTQIA people, poor folk, people played upon by the powers that be with Christian talk but a sure lack of a Christian walk or actions that reflect who Jesus is. People have questions, lots of them. To his credit, Philip meets Nathaniel's question, loaded as it may be, with a simple invitation to come and see. He doesn't try to explain things away, to tell Nathaniel he's wrong, or that he doesn't like Nathaniel's tone of voice, or require anything of Nathaniel. Philip just bravely gives the simple invitation to come and see to be in relationship, to check it out. And to his credit, Nathaniel does. Then Jesus meets Nathaniel and he welcomes him as he is with his questions and doubts, with his cynicism, pain, exasperation, whatever it is that is going on with Nathaniel. Jesus doesn't shame him for questioning or ask him to change his nature or to watch his tone. Rather, Jesus receives him with a celebration of who he is right then, not as who Nathaniel might become in the future, but who he is right then with acceptance and celebration, naming Nathaniel an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. 
Our story today is filled with the bravery, honesty, invitation, and acceptance shown by Jesus, Nathaniel, and Philip that we so desperately need in the living of these days. So what can we learn about this kind of bravery and honesty that would make a difference in our lives, our church, our community, our faith, our nation today? I think there are three things that surely help us along. The first is honest invitation to others. Inviting people to be a part of your church or to enter into faith alongside you shouldn't be a bait and switch. Like, be a part of this car giveaway with my church or receive this free food we're handing out that you need. But you're going to have to say the magic word so Jesus will love you. And then you can have this car or food or whatever. It's also not a sales pitch. Like, everything in your life will be great if you join my online small group because Jesus loves you and so do I, or however it might be that you would do a sales pitch. Rather, what is needed is an honest invitation from you, from me, an honest expression of what you value about your faith, your small group, your church community, and an invitation to the other to come and see because maybe you will value it too. Honest invitation is all about what you actually love and value so much that you want to share it with other people. The next thing I think we can really take away is honest relationship. Honest relationship is all about being authentically who you are and allowing others to be authentically who they are. And the relationship I had with the 20-something young parents who played bunko, I had to be authentically who I was. Middle-aged, older mom, lifelong questioner and lover and follower of Jesus, someone who loves to play games, and yes, United Methodist pastor. And my new 20-year-old friends were brave and went ahead to just be who they were too. Honest relationship allows for us, all of us, to be real as we are, and helps us to be brave and tender with one another and with people we don't yet know. And the kicker, I think, in all of this is honest acceptance of one another. It's hard to either extend honest invitation or honest relationship or be honestly welcoming without honest acceptance. Honest acceptance actually allows for others and ourselves to be honest, to honestly ask questions, to honestly celebrate, to honestly be broken, and to honestly receive healing from Jesus and from one another. The writer of Psalm 139, and we heard a little of this earlier, so beautifully expresses that God knows who we are completely and loves us completely. This kind of acceptance is of God and makes it possible for us to live in that kind of acceptance of one another. It is at the root of welcome and radical hospitality. This honesty extends beyond just our own self-admissions, but also names the real social conditions that might divide us. We have to be honest about racism systemic poverty, white supremacy, misogyny, and homophobia in us and in our midst and in our community. These are real things, and we can't honestly accept other people into our community without honestly deconstructing the social systems that are at work to keep us divided from one another and from God, honestly. This weekend, we're remembering and recalling the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. His was a voice of courage, justice, hope, faith, and honesty. In his famous letter from a Birmingham jail written to white clergy in Birmingham, Alabama, including the pastors of the now United Methodist congregation in that city, he talks about the hard work of honest acceptance that was required of white moderates in America. Reverend Dr. King wrote, First, I must confess that over the last few years, I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in the stride toward, toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the 
Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically feels he can see the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by the myth of time, and who constantly advises the Negro to wait until a more convenient season. He goes on to conclude, shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. Honest welcome requires honest invitation, honest relationship, and honest acceptance. All requires honesty. The cost of dishonest or lukewarm acceptance is just too high. Honestly, this is hard. But we've seen Jesus do it. We see Philip express it. Nathaniel received in it. And we know that this kind of welcome and acceptance is what we need and what others need too. Fortunately, God has blessed us with prophetic leaders like Dr. King, fellow sojourners who are part of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family and the larger Christian family, and the encouraging and convicting presence of the Holy Spirit. Also, we don't have to do this honestly hard work on our own. Thanks be to God for these gifts. Thanks be to God for one another. Thanks be to God. For honesty. Amen. As we go to God in prayer, join us in singing Just As I Am Without One Plea. Good morning, everybody. My name is Cameo Mancy, and I'm going to ask that you please join with me with an open heart, with an open mind, as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, for your presence here, for the time that we have to devote to you today, for the ability to feel your spirit, be it electronically or physically, we gather together in one unison voice as lovers of you. We come to lift up specific things, Lord. We come to lift up general things. We come to lift up these grievances and these joys and these praise to you in a never-ending voice. We have our community to consider, Lord. We have our world to consider. 
And we pray for peace. We pray that you cover us in this peace, in this humility, in this respect towards one another, especially those that are not like us, those that are different than us. You have called us to do your work, Lord. Give us the energy, the ability, your sight, your sound, your hearing, to acknowledge those, to lift those up, the challenges that come in place with that. We need to come together, Lord, in a, in a large voice for you. We need to show the world who you are through us, through our actions, through the ways that we speak. Through our community, Lord, please weave these resources that in these numbers that we can come together in an effort to spread the service, to bring together those that have been torn apart, however we can contribute, however we can do it, however we can participate in things like Compass, in the shelters, in prayer groups, in the Bible studies, Lord. Please bless and anoint and bring time together for that. For those with health, be it COVID or be it cancer, those that are on the outskirts and Lord, those that are on the inskirts of everything that is going on with the pandemic in our country and in our world right now, we pray for the healing hearts and the hands. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and the physicians and all of those that are running the facilities. We pray for the families that are in the parking lots waiting for news one way or another. So give them healing, give them resources, give them the ability to come together, Lord, in the way that needs to be bound in your holy name and your holy process. We give to you those that are in recovery from surgeries right now, that are healing, Lord, from the procedures that have been done. Give them a restful place. Give them a time to heal. And in that place of healing, Lord, reassure them. Give them the energy. Give them the focus that they need to point themselves and their heart to you. Please relieve them of pain, Lord. Please them relieve them of loneliness that they may be feeling. And we ask that you also watch over those with mental struggles, physical struggles, afflictions, things that steal and destroy the joy that we have and receive from you. So for all of our health concerns, Lord, and there is many, we ask that you just be with them. For those that are in grief and participating through those stages of grief right now that are suffering loss so heavy and so burdened that might not have had an opportunity to seal with uh, a ceremony, something that would allow them, Lord, to move on and start a grief process. Please comfort their hearts. Please surround them with people that will help tender to them and take care of them. Please reassure them, Lord, that your presence is known. And for all of those in a space of loneliness, please accompany them, feel let them feel your presence there as well, Lord, because we are never alone and you are our best friend. For the service, we pray for the essential workers, for again, the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, the police, the fire, for those that are making so many sacrifices, our teachers, administrators, our government officials, our church leaders right now. There is so much distraction in this world, Lord. Please keep us focused on you and what your purpose is within our lives and within the service that we can be done. Please give your protection to these policemen, again, to these EMT, those first responders that have to go on scenes of unknown circumstances. Protect them and allow them to come home to their families every evening. And we thank you, Lord, for the service that they do. For our military men and women, please watch over them. For peace is what we always pray for, but there are warring situations and there are disturbances in this earth that we live in. So for all of our military men and women who are willing and have donned that sacrifice of supporting and protecting something that is so much bigger than themselves, please watch over them. Please watch over their families. And if they are away from their families and their units and their connections right now, please bring them home safely. Never ever let us forget to pray for those who have that sacrifice on our behalf, on our freedom's behalf. And we acknowledge, Lord, that your sacrifice was the ultimate and your freedom is the ultimate. As we go beyond this place, as we go beyond this day of Sabbath, Lord, watch over us throughout this week. 
Let us prepare ourselves for what might be happening within, again, our, our government, within our community, within our family circles, within our children, and those that we need to ensure that we pray for and lift up because we know their struggles. But more importantly, Lord, we give these struggles to you and we know that you know their struggles. Your relationship is not one from a thousand miles away, Lord, but you are personal and you are intimate and you are loving and you are caring for us. And for that, we praise you and we give you thanks. Bless this word that we have heard today. Bless this sermon that we might take these things away and use that to cultivate and strengthen and grow and sharpen that relationship that we have with you. And we love you so much, Lord. Hear all of these prayers. Understand all of these circumstances. And please, if you will, wherever you are, join with me by saying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom, for thine is your power, and thine is your glory forever and ever. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we collectively say, amen. Thank you. We now have the opportunity to respond in thankfulness with the generosity of our financial gifts and the giving of ourselves. Thank you so much for the way you have been giving to the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Those financial gifts make all of the ministries that we are able to engage in at this time possible, from online worship and small groups to service into the community to the way our building is at work for service in our community. All of those things. We encourage you to continue to give your financial gifts, you can do that by using our online giving portal. Uh, that link is right in the comments section and you can access it through our webpage as well. You can of course set up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. If you need some help with that, please just contact us in the church office. And of course you can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want to encourage you to use the contact form if you have not done so. That is a way to offer yourself today in, in your presence, and in your connection to all of these ministries and also to use that place there to uh, share your prayer requests. Now today is Human Relations Sunday when on this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend we take up a special offering connected with United Methodists throughout our country. This special offering supports programs, community workers and missionaries that work in racial, ethnic and multicultural communities to empower the underserved and to transform unjust systems. I invite you to give general Generously to do that. You can do that through, of course, our online portal. You can send uh, in your gifts to Douglas Avenue United Methodist with your check. Just write in the memo line, Human Relations Day offering. That drop-down menu on, um, on our online portal has a special giving place for Human Relations Day offering, so check for that. And then I just invite you to receive this special video that we have about Human Relations Day offering. Everyone loves a hero because, in the face of injustice, a hero stands up. For the frustrated and voiceless, a hero speaks up. When God's children were oppressed, a hero set the captives free. And now through your connection with the United Methodist Church, you can follow his example. You can be a hero too. Your generous gift to the Human Relations Day special offering empowers a host of humble heroes who believe everyone has the right to realize their potential as human beings in relationship with one another. Through this special offering of the United Methodist Church, generally celebrated in January and the Sunday before the national observance of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, you offer a lasting solution. You bring permanent justice through systemic change and community development you bring wholeness and economic opportunity to strengthen those who have no hope. The majority of this special offering benefits neighborhood ministries through community developers, empowering those closest to the need to do the most good. A significant portion supports community advocacy through United Methodist Voluntary Services, 
raising awareness of problems like poverty and homelessness, human trafficking, immigration, and environmental justice. Your giving gives hope to at-risk teens through ministries like the Youth Offender Rehabilitation Program, positioning young men and women for success as they find their way forward once again. When you give to the Human Relations Day offering, you become a humble hero, affirming that every one of God's children deserves justice, equality, and the opportunity to walk freely in the light of God's love. And you empower each of them to someday become heroes too. Together, we do more. Learn more about Human Relations Day. Visit www.umcgiving.org forward slash HRD. Please join us in singing Marching to Zion. such a pleasure to join with you in online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. We love you and are so glad that you have chosen to spend this time with this faith community. And we pray that this time of worship has been uplifting for you, powerful for you, has been welcoming and affirming for you, and that you will continue to join with us in online worship, in small groups online, in prayer, and in service to our community. If you have not done so, please do use that contact form that pinned in the comment section with your contact information so we can welcome you and connect with you and also use that place there for prayer requests that go to our pastors and our prayer team. And now as you go into your day, into your long weekend, go knowing that God loves you as you are, who you are, with all that you are, that Jesus Christ welcomes you with all that you are, with who you are, with all that you bring. And that the Holy Spirit encourages us and engages us and connects us one with one another so that we can be that incredible, hospitable welcome in this world. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Amen.